Let's talk a little bit about neurogenic shock. Neurogenic shock is all about the damage of the cervical spine here and the inability to send transmissions through the cervical spine from the medulla, which is gonna control sympathetic and parasympathetic response within the body. So when we have that damage of nerve transmission, then ultimately we're gonna see symptoms below that area. And now what's gonna happen is that we're going to have a decrease in systemic vascular resistance. Systemic vascular resistance is all about the fluid pressure against the vessels. So we see vessel dilation which is going to create a decrease in the resistance, a great decrease in the pressure, and ultimately leading to a decrease in blood pressure. So that's the problem here when it comes to neurogenic shock. But there's another piece to it is that because we're not able to send transmissions from the medulla to the rest of the body, we ultimately are going to have no compensation meaning that we're not gonna, typically we're gonna have things like increased heart rate, increased stroke volume, increased cardiac output to compensate for the decreasing blood pressure because of the decrease in stroke volume. That doesn't occur in neurogenic shock because the inability to transmit signals from the medulla to the rest of the body because of the damage of the cervical spine. One of the hardest things that paramedic students have to do is make decisions when they walk on an ambulance because they don't have the experience in order to do that. And so what we've done is solve that problem. We have built dozens of interactive scenarios so you can see the patients and see their vital signs and answer questions that you see in front of you and get immediate feedback. So when you walk on an ambulance, you feel more confident treating your patients.